Welcome to Etcd the Hardest Way. But Merrick, where's our terminal session? There's no terminal today. I was going to try to compact this talk into actually setting up etcd and configuring it. And there was just no way that I was going to be able to do it. I, I just couldn't do it and make it a reasonable length video. So today you just get me. It's just me. So etcd is basically uh, the memory for your uh, the distributed memory for your Kubernetes cluster. Um, it is a distributed key value store, kind of the highlights of all my dealings with etcd. And this is all with relation to Kubernetes. You can run etcd not with Kubernetes. You don't need to run Kubernetes. It's a key value store in a distributed key value store all by itself. But there is some very specific Kubernetes topics. So let's get into it. First, you can run etcd on your control plane nodes. And that's fine. And I think that's good in some instances. What I would have to say is if you plan for your cluster to be of any size, let's say over a thousand nodes, don't make that a hard and fast rule, but over a thousand nodes, it becomes prudent to remove etcd from the control plane nodes because both the control plane nodes need to be expanding to um, handle the extra traffic as well as the etcd nodes. So they're going to be needing to be larger and more powerful and you don't want them stacked on top of each other like that. So, so if you're planning on having a large cluster, they need to be your etcd nodes needs to be their own cluster of computers or VMs, whichever you're using. That's the other thing. Uh, a lot of people ask, oh, well, what size? What size machine do I need? That completely depends on what you're planning on doing with it. Uh, Personally, I say that if you have an etcd cluster for Kubernetes, that etcd cluster should only serve Kubernetes. Don't try to piggyback off of it. Don't try to use it for another application that just uses etcd. Don't do it. If an application needs etcd, you stand up an etcd cluster for it. All right. The sizing really matters on how large. And there's some estimates and there's some resources out there. But this really depends on how big of a cluster you're trying to make. All right. All right, so we've covered size and now and a little bit of configuration. Again, stacked is great. It's simpler, but not for large clusters. Um, the next thing is what I'm going to call the number one mistake I have found of people running etcd in Kubernetes. Number one mistake. I see this all the time, all the time. They run etcd on machines with hard drives. I mean, the machines are more than welcome to have hard drives as long as etcd is not running on those hard drives. This is number one mistake. You want your etcd cluster to fail, install it on hard drives. This might work if you're writing one or two values a, a, a minute to your etcd cluster. It might work just standing the cluster up because there's very little traffic. But this will fail if you add workers in volume. This will fail if you have workers that do anything. I mean, they, they, it does not have to be a whole lot. Anything. It will fail. It will fail. It will fail. So this is my number one mistake that I see with etcd. Don't install on hard drives. Use SSDs only. You can run 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, maybe even 14, 15. Etcd nodes. Most of these are ludicrous numbers and shouldn't be attempted, shouldn't be thought of, really don't even make sense in any ways. Really, three, five, and seven are the only number of nodes that make any sense. I would even argue that seven doesn't make any sense either. Why you ask? So this comes down to consensus algorithms and I can do some videos on consensus algorithms if if this is if people want and please leave me comments below if you'd like some videos on consensus algorithms. But what this comes down to is that to maintain quorum, um, quorum is an interesting word, you should look it up. Quor to maintain quorum, um, 
an etcd node or nodes need to maintain a majority. So that would be n divided by two plus one. So, and forget about rounding. So um, we could add that into the equation, I suppose, but that would just make the equation a little messy. It doesn't matter. Um, so if you have three nodes, you must have at least two of them to maintain quorum. All right, so if you have four nodes, how many do you have to have? So if you do the n divided by two of four, that would be two plus one would be three. So to maintain quorum, you would need three. That means with four nodes, you may lose one node. So one node crashes, goes down, catches fire, doesn't matter. So that means you have one node of fault tolerance with four nodes and three nodes. Let, let's do a simpler one, two nodes. You, you would think that two nodes would be more available than one node, but actually two nodes is less available than one node. It's less available. So why is it less available? The quorum for two nodes is two nodes. That means if you lose any one of the nodes, any either one of them goes down, you will lose quorum and you will be unable to write to your etcd key value store. Now you will still be able to read from the, the remaining one, but you will not be able to write. Now you might be thinking, why, why is this uh, worse than a one bet one? It's worse because you now have two machines that can fail. So you've actually expanded your footprint of nodes that can fail so now you have two nodes that can fail and either one of them will bring down quorum. Now, if reading is more important, I suppose you could argue that it is uh, a little bit better to have both nodes. And if you want to have be able to read from them, even in a, in a segmented uh, network, in general, don't ever think about two nodes. Don't ever think about four nodes. Don't ever think about any even number node. Only think about prime numbers and low prime numbers. Uh, the reason you don't want to go to 11 nodes or whatnot, etcd is chatty. It likes to chat. Think about a group of people that just chit chat all the time. They're always texting. These nodes are texting like, trying not to offend an entire population of people. So I'm not going to finish that. But these, these nodes are very extremely chatty. And because of that, uh, because of all their chattiness, you start adding more and more nodes and the, the network traffic, the hard drive write speeds just has to be phenomenal and, and you start wasting resources. So really with a five node cluster, you can lose any two machines. And if all they're doing is running etcd, these machines shouldn't be doing anything else. If they are, you've made a mistake. They should only be running etcd, and etcd is very stable, so it doesn't really crash. So really with five nodes, and that means you'd have to lose three nodes without rectifying your cluster. That's not easy to do. It's not easy to do. So really, I don't think that there's any need to run more than five nodes. I mean, maybe if people's lives depend on it, I would run seven nodes. I just don't do software that people's lives depend on. Uh, that way I don't have to make this decision. Five nodes is really good. All right, so thank you for joining me uh, with etcd. My next video will be setting up a three node etcd cluster. This cluster will be highly available. We'll be able to lose any one node and it will continue to work. It will be three nodes. It will use certs, TLS certificates to communicate and it will be ready to be the back end for Kubernetes. Now, I'm doing it because it's the hardest way and that's how we roll. I'm doing it with etcd removed from the control plane nodes. So etcd runs in its own cluster and it's kind of my preferred way of doing it. If, I, if I'm if i making VMs for this anyways, it doesn't really add that much to add the VMs for a dedicated etcd cluster. It's not that bad. All right, thank you so much for joining me. I hope that you have had a fantastic time exploring etcd a little bit. 
I might do another video in the future about debugging etcd. Although really, the only times that I mostly have problems with etcd is if you run it on hard drives. Otherwise, etcd just works. Just works. If you'd like to know more about Raft or consensus algorithms as a whole, let me know in the comments below.